Bismillah. What do you suggest we do about this issue of battery farms, considering our society has not even come upon this problem? Yep, that enormous hideous new building opposite the main entrance to the Haram in Mecca, built on the proceeds of battery farming in Saudi Arabia. We're very happy to adopt the worst, most inhuman, most anti-prophetic practices of the modern West. What can I say? Ar-Rahimuna yarhamuhum ar-Rahman People of Rahmah will be the ones who receive the Rahmah of the Rahman. If we don't have any Rahmah to other orders of Allah's creation, really how can we expect to receive Rahmah on the day when it will all matter terribly? I don't know. We treat animals badly in the Muslim world. We have a crisis of Rahmah. It's a shortage. It's running out somehow. We often treat hospital patients badly in the Muslim world. We treat the mentally ill badly in the Muslim world. I had a student a couple of years ago, a very good-hearted English girl, not a Muslim, and she'd been attending all of my lectures explaining how wonderful Islam is. And she learned Farsi and she went to Iran and she did some voluntary work in mental hospitals there and told me with real grief in her voice with what contempt the mentally ill are treated there, how they're chucked around and bullied and beaten and maltreated and nobody in society seems to know or care about what's going on. Whereas the Rahmah of the Ummah, even towards fellow human beings, certainly whereas the Rahmah towards animals, which is an important and very beautiful aspect of the Sunnah. It's not there in the New Testament. No emphasis on the love for animals there. It's not really there in the other Western religions. It's there conspicuously in the, the Sunnah. But where is it in the reality of the Muslim world? Allahu A'lam. What we can do in the West is to vote with our feet and tell the greedy halal meat trade that we were actually happy to pay twice as much for uh, organic halal chicken than for some creature that's been crushed in a cage and stuffed with growth hormones for the pathetic few weeks of its life before being slaughtered in an almost meaningless fashion, which is also another problem. The way the halal meat industry actually kills animals needs close scrutiny. What we need to do is to hit them where it hurts, which is in the wallet, by saying, we'll eat half as much chicken and pay twice as much for it if we know that the chicken has been treated in a way that our religion would regard as honorable. If enough people in our community think that way, then the meat trade will adjust accordingly. So there is something we can do. If anybody really cares, The word Rahmah is often translated as mercy. Those, those of us who speak English fluently, if we look into the dictionaries of this English language, we'll find that mercy usually implies a forgiving attitude when you have the right to seek justice. And I can tell you, despite the, all the English translations you have, that is not what Rahmah means. That is not what Rahma means. It is possibly a meaning that can come, a far distant meaning that can come, but it is absolutely not what Rahma means. So when time and time again you're reading Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the very essential element by which you open up the divine revelation? The very element by which you're about to recite or rather when you're to do anything good. The Prophet wasallam, any activity which is for Allah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim or Bismillah. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose for you to understand this word Rahmah? <coughs> Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose for you to recite or to speak this word Rahma? Rahma, brothers and sisters, if we understand what it meant in terms of the prophetic sense, it is a type of love. The Prophet spoke about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divided up his Rahma in this world and he saved his special Rahma 
for the next, for those who enter into that Rahman, understand it in this world. And whenever the Prophet ﷺ chose to explain what that love is, he gave the analogy of the mother. That's why you find when the Prophet ﷺ would pass by and he would see there was once an animal that was so caring, the, it would raise its hooves when the child would go under and the Prophet ﷺ said, do you see the Rahmah of this mother? for its young. And he gave an analogy of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah is far greater than that. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in many a hadith and a hadith Qudsi narrates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am Rahman and I created the Raham, which itself is the womb of the mother. And I named it after me. So the word Rahmah itself, the first thing Allah wants you to know is it is a type of love, but it's not this romantic movie based love. No, it's the love of the mother, which is when you start thinking, what is the love of the mother of the womb? What is the love of the womb? What is the love when all of you experience because all of you were once in the womb? For starters, it is the love of non separation. It's the love that doesn't need you to cognate, to think, oh, I love you because, I love you for, I love you based on ala harfin, on some particular reason. It's a love that cannot help but be because you are that, you are through that. Your mother, when she kept you in the womb, her breath was your breath. Did you know that? You breathed through her. Every time she breathed in, that is the only reason why you breathe. Her food, literally what she take, formed every cell of your body. What she ate, and that's why the ulama says, if you're going through this term of pregnancy, very important because you're forming literally your baby by what you eat, but also what you take in sensorially, what you take in spiritually and what you take in in other ways. That's why many of the ulama used to emphasize the children being around in the womb, being exposed to the Quran, being exposed to gatherings of light, because this is forming you. That is Rahmah. It's a love whereby it is so connected, so, so, so connected. You wouldn't exist without it. And Allah is reminding you of that time and time again. Every time you recite the Quran, you are so connected. And the Prophet ﷺ, he was only sent to be a rahmah unto all of the worlds.